Hi there, this is the first in a series of four lessons all about TIG graphs based at the, the National 5 level. So TIG graphs, probably not seen these before, but you have heard the word sin, cos and tan before. And we're going to show you what these look like visually. So you'll notice a little pencil icon up in the corner. So if this is your um, lesson, I would encourage you to copy down what's on this screen. So this graph here is a graph of y equals sine x. I'm going to talk about some key features to that graph right now down the bottom here. So the shape of a sine graph looks a bit like an S shape. It starts at zero. And there should probably be a zero there in my diagram. It starts from zero. It goes up to 90, down to 180, down to 270 and back up to 360. And then it would just continue and keep going like that. It's a continuous wave and it would keep going up to 720 and up to whatever again and it keeps going back we went to negative numbers as well but this is a basic bit we're interested in and we normally will never look at these trig graphs when x is between x and 360. So this is what's called one complete wave of this graph. The maximum value of the graph is one because that is the highest number it goes to and that happens when x has a value of 90. So that's this point here is your maximum value. So if I ask when the maximum is and when it occurs, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for that highest turning point. It's got a minimum value here of negative 1. So the lowest number it goes to is negative 1. And that's when x equals 270. And if you ever want to go check, go to calculator and type in sine 90. You'll get out the answer of 1. Type in sine 0, 180 or 360. You'll come out with the answer of 0. That's what this is actually doing. It's graphically plotting all the answers you've been getting whenever you've been pressing sign of numbers. Now this word here, period, is very important. They can sometimes ask you this randomly, what is the period of a graph given an equation? The period is where it starts to repeat itself. So the period of the most basic graph is 360 because that's where the shape would then start to repeat. So it repeats itself every 360 degrees. Now, one thing I want to point out is the maximum value is 1 and minus 1. If you ever try and do a shift sign of a number bigger than 1, it'll come up error in your calculator. And this is why. Because the highest number a sine graph goes to is 1. And that is why it will never let you do a shift sign of 1.5 or shift sign of 2, for example. Okay, so this is a cost graph. Looks very similar to the sine graph, but it's got um, a slightly different shape. The sine graph started at zero and went up. This one starts high and goes down. So I kind of talk about this one being like a valley shape or a C turned onto its side. Okay, so some key features of the cost graph again. This is where it starts to repeat here at 360. That's called one wave. And again, that would keep going on again and finish its shape at 720 again. So the maximum value of this one is also one. The highest number it goes to and this happens in two places this time the highest value of one happens when x equals zero and 360. it's got a minimum value here of one uh, sorry of negative one the lowest number it goes to in the graph is negative one and that happens when x equals 180. the period is where it starts to repeat so the period of this graph again is 360 that's where the shape would start to repeat Okay, so that's your course graph. And then there's a sign, the, sorry, the tan graph, which is a wee bit of an exception to the rules. Tan graph looks nothing like the sign of the course graph, and it's slightly different. Its period is 180 rather than 360, so it's kind of tans out on its own. So the period of 180, you'll notice here is where that kind of, the, the curve shape starts to repeat, so it goes up. So you've got kind of two upwards curves, and then that repeats again, that exact same diagram here. So this one starts to repeat at 180. It is undefined at 90. I mean, there is no value of this ever um, being at 90 because this graph here just keeps going up and up and up and up and up and edging ever so close, but never quite getting to 90. And this one down here keeps getting closer and closer, but never, ever makes it to 90. And it also just keep, because it keeps going up, up and down, down, it has no maximum minimum value. So that's why we kind of talk about the tan graph as being out on its own. Okay, and if you ever go to your calculator and type in tan 90, it'll come up error. That's why, because your tan graph never reaches 90. It never reaches 270 either. And then it would never reach 180 onto that as well. Okay, so that is your tan graph. You don't see that one so much at National 5. 
Okay, so what I've done here is we are going to look at what happens to the shape of the graph when we start to play around with the equation and change it up a wee bit and add in some extra numbers. So this is, this is lesson one of four, okay? So this is us introducing the first wee thing. So this is a basic graph of y equals sine x, which we've already discussed. It goes from one to minus one and it starts at zero and ends at 360, okay? Add on to that now. Now, normally if I was teaching this class, I'd have my graphics calculating. You'd see this being drawn in, but it's, I can't do that today in the video. Next to, on top of that, y equals sine x graph in red, I now have the graph of y equals 2 sine x. Can you see what the difference is there? I've added a 2 in front of the equation and my graph has got taller. Now also, what secret number is in front of y equals sine x? If we never write a number there, what is it, really? It's really a 1. So there's really a number 1 in front of there, but we don't write it. Now notice your sine graph went from 1 to minus 1. When I put a 2 in front, what does the graph to go to and from now? It goes from 2 to minus 2. So is that number in front maybe connected to the highest and lowest points on this graph? Let's have a look at another one. So here is the sine graph with my sine 2x in blue. And now I've added in this new one. I've added in y equals 3 sine x in a kind of purpley colour. 3 sine x graph goes from 3 to minus 3. So what does that tell us then? What can we say that the number in front of the sine x graph does? You've probably already spotted it already, haven't you? The number in front of the sine graph tells us how high the graph goes to. Okay, so the fancy word for this, oh sorry, I've put in one more, I forgot about this one. Y equals 0 0.5 sine x graph in front only goes as high as 0 0.5 and as low as negative 0 0.5 there. So let's write this bit down. So there's a pencil back, so I'd like you to copy this one. So for the general equation, Y equals a sine x, a has got the fancy word called amplitude, okay? And technically that means that's the maximum height of the graph. So if you've got a four in front, the highest number it goes to is four. If you've got a 10 in front, the highest number the graph goes to is 10 and so on. And then if you copy down a wee sketch of this graph, obviously when you're drawing these, you don't need the numbers one, two, three, and four in it. You're only interested in putting down that minus three and the three. So what is the equation of this graph? We've already seen it on the slide before. This one goes as high as the number three. It is a sine graph, so it's three sine x. So I'll probably expect you, or your teacher will expect you at this point to recognize the difference between a sine and a cos graph. Luckily in a national five exam, they normally tell you what it is, but for the sake of my slides, I don't think I should have to tell you whether it's sine or cos, okay? So let's have a look, look at some more. So here's another one. Again, it's got a pencil there. So if this was your notes, I would be copying this one down. Now this one looks ever so slightly different. The highest number it goes to is two and the lowest number it goes to is minus two. So it's a two graph, but what has happened? Your sine graph looks like this. Your cos graph looks like this. Which one do you think it looks more like? It looks more like my cos graph, so it's definitely a cos graph. But there's something else different about it. Cos graph would have started up here at 2, but this one starts at minus 2. In fact, it's a mirror image. It has been flipped upside down. So because it has been flipped upside down, we put a negative in front of it. Okay, so a negative in front means it is upside down. And I just write that there. So upside down. So it's negative. Okay. So I'm going to take you through a couple more examples. If I was teaching in class at this point, I would have loads of these up and we maybe use show me boards. But I'm going to pause and let you just think, what could the equation of this one be? First of all, is it a sine or a cos graph? It starts high and goes low. So it's definitely a cos graph. What's the highest number it goes to? Highest number it goes to is 6. So it's a 6 cos x graph. That's the equation of that one. Okay, what is this one? Sine or cos? It starts at 0 and goes up into a kind of S shape. So it's definitely a sine graph. 
what's the highest number it goes to? It goes up to 4. So this is a 4 sine x graph. Okay, what's this one? Sine or cos? It starts at 0, goes into that lovely S shape, so that is a sine graph. What is the highest number it goes up to? It's not 100% clear, but I'm reckoning it's halfway here. So you've got the option here, you can either say it's 0 0.5 or you could say it is a half. Your choice. Okay. And here's another one. Sine or cos, what do you think? It's that S shape, definitely, so it's a sine. But it's also, do you notice it's flipped upside down again? So it's a negative because it's upside down. And the highest number it goes to, if you chase it along, is 2. It might be easier to chase along from the bottom number. It goes from 2 to minus 2. So it is a negative 2 sine x graph. Okay, the highest number it goes to is still 2. It just happens a bit further along than it would if it wasn't upside down. And the last one again. It's not the sine graph. It's got that lovely kind of valley shape, but it's upside down again. So it's a negative cos. Highest number it goes to is 3. So this is a negative 3 cos x graph. Now, the only other thing they might ask you, the one last thing they might ask you to do in an exam is to sketch a graph, okay? Now, sketching the graph is very important to look at this bit here. This is the parameters that they want it drawn on, and that can completely change your picture. So they want it drawn between 0 and 360. Now, most people jump in and draw graphs by drawing the lines and putting the numbers in. I don't do that. I honestly don't do that because we end up with really um, wonky-looking curves and graphs. So the first thing I look at is a sine graph. So I draw this lovely shape of a sine graph. So it's that S shape. Then I'll put in my axis. Sorry, I should be using a ruler here. And then I mark on the numbers it goes to, top and bottom. So the highest it goes to is a 4, because it's a 4 sine graph. And the lowest it goes to is minus 4. And then one other thing they have to put on is they wanted this drawn between 0 and 360. So you have to put that 360 in there. It is complete. That is perfect. It's completely optional if you want to put in the 180. You could put in the 90 and the 270 if you wanted, but there's no need. The only thing they need is this. The fours here, the 360 and the shape. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this video. Feel free to come back for part two where we start to add in something else to the equation. We start to put a number in front of the X as well. Thank you very much.